This is our Forex blog for January 30th, 2012. And like most days, we want to buy the strongest currencies versus the weak and sell the weakest versus the strong. And on the easiest days, for instance, the dollar, when it's showing an incredible strength right here, it matches the direction of the daily, weekly, and monthly. However, today is a counter trend day. Currencies don't go one way forever. forever. So as you look at your daily charts, if you see a currency has gone up 300, 800 pips, and it's been pretty much a one-way direction, it's due to have a pullback day, and that's what we have here in the dollar and the yen. Between the dollar and the yen, which are both strong, the yen has a daily trend that's up, and the weekly trend, for the most part, coming up to today, switched slightly up, and the weekly or the monthly trend is slightly down versus extremely down in the dollar. So between the two currencies, it's much better to trade a weaker currency today uh, against the yen than the dollar. You're going to increase your odds. Now, last week, the Australian and New Zealand were strong on all time frames, but they were up too much. So it's you know very likely when a currency moves statistically too far up, it's going to pull back. Between the two, the Australian's weekly trend and daily trend both shifted down even before today. And so the Australian, Australian yen makes a good one to sell today. And you can see, of course, it fell um, Sunday and or Friday and Sunday uh, as well. And you'd be looking to trade this on any kind of a pullback. You draw your trend lines underneath the bars. You go short. You can see this fell 20, 30 pips. You short here. It fell about 20 pips. Um, and once it's underneath the lower white band, it's relatively risky to to sell. I wouldn't sell it down here, but when it pulls back up here, you can have a small little trade. A uh, small little trade, and when currencies are down too much and they go sideways for a couple hours, if they don't get a bounce to the upside, typically they're going to go down again. Uh, so you could give these uh, trades right here a go, small profit. This one right here fell about 30 pips. The euro also was up a lot last week. It's showing incredible weakness today, so selling the euro yen makes sense. This is a little. Uh, higher probability trade than the others because it's just broke from above to below the hourly. That's usually a high probability trade because you can go short with the lower containment bands as your profit targets. So this area right here, you go short. Notice our intelligent trailing stop, a uh, small 15, 20 pip win. Short here, about 5 pip loss. Short here, 10 pip win. Short here, uh, 15 pip win. Um, and again, underneath the lower containment band, Normally, you're going to get some support there and you're going to get a bounce. Anytime a currency hits a support area and goes sideways for two hours in a very tight 10 pip range, it's not very likely to go up. So you go short again when it breaks right here, knowing that it's a relatively risky trade, but it has a high potential profit target. Uh, here's your first profit target, here's your second. Also happens to be the monthly pivot level in a Fibonacci retracement area. Anytime you get 20, 30 pips underneath the lower white band, it's very likely to reverse. So anytime it goes above the previous bar's high, you want to get out. So you'd be out of this around 21, short here at 48 for about a um, 27 pip profit. Again, when the key to trading is small losses, big wins. When you have 6 to 10 pip losses and a lot of break-evens, and 15, 20, and sometimes 30 to 50 pip wins, uh, that's a real key to trading. 